What's up motivators, Taryn here. If you're looking for a triathlon training plan that includes strength training, A, kudos, you are heading down the right track. Strength training is very, very critical to performing well in endurance sports. Secondly, you're in the right place because what we've laid out here is a triathlon training plan with strength training. We are going to go through how you set it up during a week, what you would do in the strength training each week, how it changes between your baseline training plan and your race training plan. What do you do when you feel you need to rest? How do we set it up in each day, whether it should come first or second in a day's worth of workouts? We're gonna go through all of that right now. My name is Taryn Gazelle. In my late 20s, I was overweight, unfulfilled, and couldn't even run to the end of the block. Over the following 10 years, I lost 65 pounds racing triathlons, running races, cycling events, and world championships. But eventually, the suffer culture of endurance sports training caught up to me causing health issues and injuries. Now, my company Motive and I are on a mission to help people live more fulfilling lives by reaching endurance sports goals using healthy methods. We can all kill it on race day without killing our bodies. Let's do it. So before we get into the training plan, I just want to state a few of the reasons that you are really on the right track by thinking about looking for a training plan that includes strength training. First, your performance will improve. Even if you replace some of the endurance training that you want to do with strength training, like do less endurance training and replace it with strength training, we're not talking about adding more hours, just doing the same hours, but replacing some of that hours with strength training, your performance will improve. Studies show it over and over again because of the improvement in economy. That being the amount of energy that it takes to actually swim, bike, or run, you're going to be able to, at the same effort level, use less energy. Or you're going to be able to use the same energy to go faster. Second, for all of us aging athletes, it's so important to make sure that we slow the rate of muscle loss. By including strength training, we can not just slow the rate of muscle loss, but we can build muscle. This is a really, really big key determinant of what your quality of life is as you age. So if you can slow that rate of muscle loss and stay more muscular, your quality of life is going to be much better. Endurance training tends to degrade your muscle. We want to offset that with some strength training. The third thing is that if you have a higher amount of muscle in your body, your metabolic rate is going to be higher, so you're actually going to be less likely to gain weight and gain fat. More muscle means that your body uses a little bit more energy just being a person just existing sitting around so it's going to be easier for you to not overeat essentially so your body composition is going to be better which is a huge determinant of endurance race performance it's not always lighter is better but it is always that better body composition does lead to better races so if you have a better fat to muscle ratio a better body fat percentage by having more muscle you're probably going to perform a lot better and then the fourth and final thing is that your hormone panel is going to be better. As we all age, making sure our testosterone levels are high, our hormones are really well balanced, this is going to ensure that we age a lot better. Okay, let's get right into this. How I like to set up a week's worth of training, whether it is run training plans or triathlon training plans or marathon swim training plans, anything like that. I really like bookending hard training in the middle of a week with easy days on Monday and Friday, and then saving the long workouts for the Saturday and Sunday. And whether you are a shift worker and your weekend is actually like Thursday, Friday, or Sunday, Monday, whatever your days off are, that's when you wanna go long. So let's start filling in how this works. On Monday and Friday, we're gonna say that these are easy days. That's gonna be how it is during base training, and that's how it's going to be when you are actually in a training plan type of phase. What this allows you to do is, if you are going really hard in the middle of the week, Tuesday to Thursday, it allows you to recover. It'll also allow you to get a little bit of rest before a big weekend, then you have your big weekend, and then you can recover again on Monday, repeating that cycle. So it's like a mini cycle within the overall training cycle. Next thing we're going to fill in is Saturday and Sunday. These will be the long training days. People tend to have obviously more time on their days off, so that's where we spend a little bit more time training, working on that endurance side of things. 
Then in the middle of the week, we fill that in with intensity, really key workouts that you can get a heck of a good workout in in not a whole lot of time. So in the middle of the week, let's fill in intense training. So that's going to be intense and key during base training and during the training plan. But what do you actually do during all of these sessions? Let's get into that. Personally, I like to have the long ride followed by a brick run where you're running off the bike on Saturday and then you're running on Sunday. You can switch them if you'd prefer to run on Saturday and then bike on Sunday. I think there's just like a marginally little bit bigger benefit to having the bike and then the run after so that you are actually running on tired legs, which is basically what's gonna happen during the race. So if I had my choice, I would put the bike on Saturday, but if you've got a run group that you wanna join on Sunday, cool. But let's say you're doing the long bike here on Saturday. So we're gonna put this in as a bike. What we want to build up to all the way down here when you're in a training plan is you want to build up to an epic ride, what I call an over distance ride. For an Ironman, it's not gonna be longer than the distance for most people, but for all of the other distances of triathlon, it is going to be longer than the actual distance that you're going to do in a race. So you're gonna start wherever you are at. If a 40K ride or a 25 mile ride is a long ride to you, start with that. And then build up by about 10% each week and then drop down every third week to 60% of what you've done before. So let's say you are at 40K, then build up the next week to 44K. Then the third week being a rest week, you're gonna drop it down to about 60% of what you did before. So we're looking at about 26, 27K. Build up in that fashion all the way to the over distance ride. And what we're building up to is an Ironman, it's gonna be small here, but I'm going to say it to you, is going to be six hours long. A 70.3 athlete is gonna build up to 125K, which is 78 miles. An Olympic distance athlete is gonna build up to 60 to 70K, which is about 38 to 43 miles. A sprint athlete is going to build up to 40 to 50K, being about 25 to 30 miles. And as many of these bikes as you can do with a short brick run of anywhere from 10 to 50 minutes is gonna be really good. Sunday, the long run is going to follow the same thing. Start with wherever you are currently set up, whatever is long, go that long, build up by 10% each week, drop down every third week for a rest week. We're going to build up to a similar over distance run where an Ironman, is actually going to be two different runs of two and a half hours in the morning and then one and a half hours in the evening. That split run allows you to basically stop running as soon as you're getting tired and maybe you start losing good form. That's gonna be really key to eliminating injuries. In a 70.3, we're gonna build up to doing a long run of 25K being about 15 miles for an Olympic athlete, we're building up to 15K being nine miles and a sprint athlete, we are building up to eight to 10K being five to six miles. So boom, all of a sudden you have all of the endurance that you need. Let's keep going and building out the rest of the plan. During these intense days, what are you going to do? Well, a lot of it depends on your schedule specifically. The types of workouts that I like to have in these intense days are workouts that you would end thinking, whoa, that was a solid workout. Whether it be an intense bike or an intense, very key swim or a very intense interval focused run. That is actually how I would lay it out is bike on Tuesday, swim key on Wednesday, and then a key run on Thursday. These sessions are going to be anywhere from about 30 to 75 minutes. For a sprint athlete in the 30 to 40 minute range is good. For an Ironman athlete, we're probably gonna be 50 to 75 minutes for most of these. But what is a key workout? Well, with the bike, during the baseline training, you're going to be doing a lot of intervals 
that are like absolutely all out of 15 to 60 seconds with big full rests of two to four minutes. In the training plan phase, you're actually going to extend those. So down here, it's gonna be more like two to six minute intervals with shorter rest of maybe 30 seconds to two minutes. So as you're building, you're building the length of the interval and you're shortening the rest period. It's going to be the same with the intense run. Really short, we're talking hill reps or really good strong surges of 15 to 60 seconds up here. And then during the plan, we're talking more like two minutes to six minutes continuous. The key swim, that's gonna be a really big effort kind of swim. We wanna do for a sprint athlete, make sure that you're getting about a 1K to one and a half K of swimming in. For an Olympic athlete, we're gonna look at one and a half K to about 2K of swimming. For a half Ironman athlete, we're looking at about 2K to 3K worth of swimming. And for an Ironman athlete, we're looking at about three and a half to some workouts might be 6K. I promise you we're getting to the strength training part of it, but how we're laying out the rest of this is a big part of what goes into incorporating a strength training plan really well. Let's get into the easy days here. These are gonna be really simple. We're talking about a light bike. So in my case, I used to do just a 60 minute easy ride one of these days. And the other day I would actually do a tempo bike, which would be longer intervals of two to eight minutes, but with low cadence. I really liked these 50 to 70 RPM, like low grinding kind of intervals at a heart rate that was right around the top of your zone two that's going to allow you to still keep your stress level down while getting a little bit of tension into the muscles. Because when you do low cadence training, your heart rate doesn't rise nearly as much. So those are good workouts to have in those days. You can also do a very technique or recovery focused swim on one of these days. You can also, if you are a really, really well adapted runner, you can do a very light, low intensity, low zone two kind of run. I wouldn't put that here after the run there. And I also wouldn't put it there. But if you're running on back to back days, you've gotta be really quite careful about that because you start grouping runs and going run, 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 it ends up often creating injuries, so you wanna make sure you're a really, really well adapted runner to be able to handle that volume. So now let's get into how do we actually put in strength training into this plan. Well, we've laid this out in a specific way so that we've got intensity focused here, and this is not necessarily intense because these are long and low intensity kind of rides and runs, but these are key days. These are days that build up your endurance. These are days that build up your strength. It's gonna take a lot out of you. Strength training takes a lot out of you. So a common error that a lot of people make when they include strength training into a training plan is they say, well, you know what? I've got more time on my easy days, so I'm gonna actually put it there. But what happens is you aren't actually recovering then on those easy days. Because that strength training is taking so much out of you, you're not actually getting the purpose of the day, which is to actually recover. So when we're doing strength training, in the base training plan, we want two to three days per week of strength. I like them spaced out a little bit so you're not doing anything on back-to-back -back days. So I would add strength on Tuesday. I would then also add it on Thursday so you've got a complete rest day. And then I would put it on either one of these days being on Saturday or Sunday. I would probably lean towards Sunday because I don't really ever like running on legs that are just totally, totally smashed. In the base training phase here, this is say two months or longer away for a sprint athlete. This is three months or longer away for an Olympic athlete. This is five, four months or so for a half Ironman athlete and six months for an Ironman athlete. You're following this where you're doing a lot of strength, three strength sessions, and in these strength sessions, you are going intense. 
The general rule of thumb that I can give you, no matter what training plan you're following, is fill these strength sessions during the baseline training phase in such a way that you end the workout feeling tired. You feel spent. You feel like you really worked on your strength and that you're going to get stronger for it. That's going to be different than what we do in the training plan phase. Once you enter a training plan, there's going to be so much more effort in these long bikes, in these intense workouts, because they are going to get longer, they're going to get more intense. You're putting more of your intensity focus and more of the energy that you can expel and recover from into the endurance training. We're trying to train to be an endurance athlete. We're not trying to train to be a strength athlete. So during this period, I would actually drop the strength down from three times a week to one time a week and put it on an otherwise very intense day. I would probably lean towards either Tuesday or Thursday. So if you're doing it on Tuesday during the bike, you've got two days to recover before you have to hit that hard run or you're doing it after the run so you're not really running on tired legs. So let's just put it here just for saying sake, but it really can go either way depending on what is better for your schedule. But we're pairing intense and key days with strength training. Right here, we're pairing intense training with strength training and we're dropping down the amount of strength training we're doing in a week having built up so much good strength there we can kind of ride just activating the muscles here related to that is when you get into a plan instead of ending these strength workouts like we did here feeling tired just end it feeling almost guilty for how easy it was we want to just activate muscles, make sure that muscle groups are firing, are turned on, that you're nice and stable and you're moving really well and your muscular structure is still firing really well, but we don't really want to beat ourselves down in this because we have so much of that intensity going to the endurance training. All of these strength sessions, whether they are in the baseline training or the training plan training, only about 30 minutes is what you need. That is a lot to actually fit in and recover from when you are an endurance athlete and you have so much intensity going elsewhere. So about 30 minutes is right. So we've got how much to do throughout the year. We've got where to do it in a week. We have how much to do every single day. But another good question that we get from people is, well, what should come first? Let's say it's on this Thursday where I've got a run and a strength session paired together, which one do I do first? I would encourage you to do the endurance exercise first and the strength training session after. And if you think about it this way, let's say you had to pair these, you were tight on time and you had to do the run in the morning followed immediately by the strength session. If you did the strength session first and then tried to do a key run after, really, really wouldn't feel good. You're not gonna be able to hit that intense run session with a whole lot of vigor. But if you did it the other way and you did the run first, you're gonna be able to hit the run really hard. And then the strength session, because we're not doing massive power lifting events and the strength that you're doing here is really just making you feel tired, but it's not necessarily a really intense, super high, hard intensity CrossFit kind of workout, you're really just working on building a modest amount of strength, that is going to be easy to execute immediately after a run. So I would order it as endurance session first, strength after. And if you have to squeeze them together, still endurance session first, strength after. Final thing that we need to include in here is what do we do on rest weeks? Well. A rest week is largely going to be the same thing. We're just gonna drop down the duration here. We're gonna drop down the duration of basically everything by about 30 to 50%. We're going to make sure that the strength workouts are again, feeling very guilty at the end of it for not doing a workout workout. This is going to allow you to make sure that your rest weeks are very rest focused. When I say feel guilty, for how little you did, I really, really mean it. Like, don't say, oh, well, you know, okay, well, it just kind of went light, but, you know, push just a little bit. I just want you to focus on activating muscles. So in our training plan, in the rest weeks, particularly during rest weeks, during training plan phases, we just 
in a lot of cases take weights out completely and we're working on just stretches and mobility and just turning on some muscles, just making sure that they're still functioning well and moving in good ranges of motion, but we're not building anything up. The building that we're looking to do, the purpose of those rest weeks is to rest, to make sure that we can do the work to hit it hard in the on weeks. So there you go motivators, I hope that that helped. If you are looking for a training plan, the entire training plan with all of the workouts laid out for you exactly, there's a link in the description below to our training app, the Motive Training app, which we think is as good as a one-on-one -on -one coach, but as cheap as doing it yourself. You can try it for free for 14 days, check it out. It includes every single workout that you need to do with guided kettlebell workouts inserted in the right place with the right changes at the right time of the season for you. But if you've got a training plan and you really just want the strength training aspect of it, there's also a link in the description below to just those kettlebell sessions that are all laid out for you that you can buy alone and insert into whatever training plan you want. So links are in the description below to that. And if you found this helpful, hit the like button below. Later motivators.